The one that does all the... Are we ready, by the way? Oh, are we recording? Oh, we're rolling. Oh, we're rolling. Okay. Hey, okay. Welcome back, Double Team Fam. How are we doing today? Uh, we have we brought Rose back. Hello. Rose is back. I'm so excited to be back. I'm nervous. Oh, are so you guys... Much. Okay, because I was very... You know, I wanted to come back because I feel like the last time... The la- that last episode was great. Well, I didn't realize I had so many exes that uh, have an algorithm in which they needed to learn that their ex-girlfriend has a breeding kink. Because <laughs> that became quite a sensational clip where people were sending it to me where they're like, um, I was on my TikTok and then all of a sudden I hear this voice I recognize. And it's me learning I have a breeding kink. It was fun. So let's do that again. Um, actually, yes. that video got like 4 million views. I yeah, don't know I did actually. Wait, that. hold on. How many? Let me four go, million oh, views. Let me go yeah. back and confirm. Four million views of people realizing having like a public therapy session. What I hated, everyone was like, so you just like when people come in you. And I'm like, no, there's a difference. There is a difference. There's a difference between a breeding kink and you just like having people come inside you. Because I'm learning that the huge difference is the man. Because yeah. I think it's the concept of like <laughs> yeah the I mean? mentality yeah the yeah mentality like how he carries himself how yeah. he smells oh, yeah, that's a very big thing now smell it's like yeah, okay so okay. I read this statistic a really really long time ago about how most failed relationships are happening because people don't know what their partner naturally smells like so the idea of just like no you know shampoo no conditioners no soap just like natural pheromones bo. And they did like this study on like, I think it was like 50 or like 60 co-eds in college. And they basically asked people over time, slowly stop wearing perfume and deodorant and see if your partner thinks. And they noticed that certain people were like more attracted to their partner because they were like, oh, their pheromones are something I really like. Oh, pheromones. And then it's the idea that you're like cave brain or whatever is kind of like, oh, like if this person smells good, I could probably like have sex with them, procreate and make really good babies. Wow. And I remember there was like a couple dudes that I like hooked up with, especially like my summer fling where he like he would get in my car and I just like, "Mm." let me it's not that he smelled bad. It was just the smell was like off. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Mm, something about this is not right. And then I had a little a little fun little fling um, when I was in Atlanta and there, his smell, I was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> Whenever. <laughs> so, yeah, the one in the summertime, I don't like his smell. Didn't like him coming inside of me. The other one, you know, any day of the week. He smelled so good. Wait, smelled I have so a good. question. Did you have unprotected sex with either of them? No. Okay, because another thing is, is like, um, also that story, that what you just said, fascinating. I've read uh, similar things about that before. Um, but... I've also read that like if you if your partner gives you BV a lot from like sex, like unprotected sex, it means that like you guys aren't like really compatible versus like if he doesn't and you guys have a lot of raw sex, like you are compatible. And I was like, oh, because I had partners where like they give me BV constantly. And I'm like, why is this? And then I'm like, oh it's your body literally saying no. Yeah. Exit this now. Exactly. Reject, reject, reject. Oh, my exactly. God. Yeah. Oh, my God. That makes complete sense. Yeah. Especially with like UTIs, too. Oh, did you have a moment? I, yeah, actually, I was like, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, did you not know this? No, I, I the BV thing, I knew the pheromones. The mm-hmm. BV thing, I didn't know. But I did have one partner, um, and maybe, and, but can, I, can it switch, though? I guess that's what I was trying to think about. Can it switch? Because, like, for example, with my ex-fiance. Um, I don't think so, but continue. I feel like it, like, we we had unprotected sex and it was fine, and then... No, but then I attributed that to just bad lube we used. But then towards the very end, I think he was, um, my body was just like rejecting him. So like I did get BV or UTIs, whatever. It was slowly over time. Yeah. Your body was like, mm, is no, that no. mind over We're going to try thing? this one out. And then after a while they were like, we decided no. Yeah, <laughs> no. We're like, oh, I'll do a trial run. And then it's like, okay, now he has to pay for Spotify every yeah. month. You know? exactly. <laughs> it can't be like a free example. But yeah, I do think that there are these things that our body naturally has set us up. Like from like evolution and everything about like smell and like just naturally your vagina being like he is not the one that we kind of ignore. For yeah. me, it's also eczema. Really? Like, so my eczema is a very weird thing that gets triggered by stress. Sometimes eczema is like uh, dietary and stuff like that. But I have always realized if I'm in a relationship with a guy and it's like the beginning of the end, I find myself just and I'm like, <gasps> it's it's time. I ha- He has to leave my life. My eggs and my skin is flaring up and everything. I just think it's my natural body response being like, I don't uh, like the situation. I don't like what it's bringing up. 
Love that. I might making that correlation because I'm a self-diagnosed doctor, but it's very much like I equate bad relationships with my eczema. It's true, mm. though. Your body does tell you. Like, listen to your body. So that's why I could never, towards the end of my last relationship, I could barely get wet just because of my body's like, we're actually done here. <laughs> and I was like, uh. I, okay. So I thought that was because I was getting older. And now I've realized that as you're saying that, I'm like, oh, fuck, that was the two. Because this last thing I just had, it's, I literally thought it was because I was getting older. I was like, oh, man, women, we just dry up as we get older. And it's, no, yeah. it's our body. Bed. No, my new partner right now, I was literally dripping on him last night. Like, oh, it just. Waterbed, like, just like splish splash, <laughs> taking a bath, was, which is great. Well, it's just funny because I was straddling him and like we had just finished, um, we had just finished having sex. He didn't come inside me because he can't. Um, and then we're just like chilling there for a while. And, um, and then all of a sudden I just like feel myself getting wet again. And then I was just like, he's like, you're all over my, he, like I had like. <laughs> That's what I call the happy cry. Like after you have sex uh, and there's no orgasm and you're just sitting there and then you just like, kind of like, oh, you're just like getting out of the shower and there's still like that drench feeling. You're like, I'm happy crying down there. Yeah. My this vagina was, was crying all over his stomach then. <laughs> That's so sweet. It was so good. And it's so tender if you think about it as crying and not, you know. I know. Self-lubrication. It's a little sensitive and sexy. This whole conversation has been mind-blowing to me because I've experienced that before too. Where what? like, you know, you you start to dry up on someone and you're like, oh my God, it might, like something's, no, it's them. It's them. It's or them. Or just the compatibility of you two. It's just yeah. like, okay, this isn't it, which is not a bad thing. It's just, yeah. It just, sometimes it runs its course. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, and that's the... And that's the thing is you were like, we were like, listen to our bodies. It's like, how many times have we given advice to people that we need to hear ourselves? Oh, a thousand percent. And like our body is literally the mic tap. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> I've been telling this bitch the whole pay time. Attention. The whole yeah. time. Yeah. The same way that I also had a theory that I think my period would start early if it was with a guy I liked. My body was like, oh, we got to get through this quickly. So, like, you know, <laughs> you can, can start fucking. <laughs> yes. Because, like, literally my period came a week early. And I was, like, had only a limited amount of time with this lovely gentleman. And I just was like, this is my body being like, no, girl. No, nah, we got to get through this quick so then you can enjoy all the sex afterwards. I love, I love that. that. I So, not that long ago, I had a similar experience. My period came. And usually my period is, like, mm, probably, like, four or five days. But mm -hmm. this time... I I knew I wanted I was gonna see my partner on Saturday. I started my period on Thursday. I was like, God dang, I'm gonna be bleeding through the time I go see him. But then nope, my body was like Friday night, we're done, you know, and then that was it. And I was like, fuck yeah. And then, you know, we could have sex the next day. So wait, I love that your body was like, hold on, okay, we're gonna just <laughs> hold it in, suck it in, ladies. <laughs> we, we have to perform. The show must go on. The show must go on. It, it on it did, you know. So I was very proud of myself. I was like, I finished just in time. What okay, what are the views on period sex? Because I'm learning this is this is a thing that I've been dividing my friends recently. <gasps> Period sex? Yay, nay, thoughts, considerations, so strategy. So here, here's where I stand strategy, okay. I think, is the route I go. Because it really is about, like, what day in my cycle it is. For example, if it's, like, usually the day before I start, like, that could onset it, and I'm fine with that. First day is usually really heavy flow. Second day is, like, medium flow. First day, I don't typically like to have sex mm -hmm. just because, like, and I've had a lot of period sex. I don't mind, you know, hopping off the dick and it's like covered in blood. But at the same time, like, I don't want that either. Like, I mean, when, um, with my partner recently, um, even though I had just finished my period, like I was still like, let's put a towel down just in case. Um, and I was like, and the whole time, like we're having sex, I was like, okay, I hope I don't bleed because I like just don't want to. Yeah. So I, I will have period sex as long as it's not on the first and second day, third or fourth when it's just like the blood's barely trickling out, I'll do it. Right. But I also just get like really, um, like during, I've had period sex, like on the first day of my period. And it's like, I almost can't feel anything. Okay. That's how I feel where it Same. almost feels like numb. Kind yeah. Of. Not like, yeah. like I can't feel anything, but just like, I'm like, it, there's no, uh, numb yes it's just numb it's just like i'm not i don't feel like i'm like well everything's down there's like twice the size and it's just like i can't even come because like i can't feel anything and you're also like you're also it's weird because it's also then three days after that you're the most horniest yeah you are. it's like when you're on your period so like the first day your body is like 
I'm just the vessel. I don't want to do anything. And then it just like leads to it. But it, I'm trying to get it where I am more self-conscious about it in the sense that I'm like, I just don't want you to feel uncomfortable, sir. It's like the one time where I'm kind of like, Ew, my, maybe my body is gross, but that's why God invented shower sex. Like, honestly, mm -hmm. that's just like the go to. It really blows my mind how many guys are just like completely turned off by it, though. I, that's what I was going to say for me. Like it period sex is fine when the guy makes me feel safe. Mm. If he treats me like I'm disgusting for like bleeding, which is a natural thing that literally every single woman goes through, then I'm like, no, thank you. But if he's like cool with it and doesn't care or whatever and like makes me feel safe, then I'll do it. Like. I think the most recent time I had sex um, was when I was on my period and um, it was an act, an absolute massacre down there. Like on Save my end. On, Ryan. Yeah. On <laughs> 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 you got to go in there for one body and one body only. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> and, um, but it was totally fine and he like didn't care at all. And we like had a, we had a blast with it and we just showered afterwards and it was fine. Yeah. Also, um, I've told this story before on the pod, but like I remember one time I, I was hooking up with a guy and we started going at it. I start bleeding and we go in the shower. And when we're in the shower, he just goes, OK, so you ready for anal? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So <laughs> we just did <laughs> enol instead. OK, you guys, this is the this is the point of the story where I remember I am vanilla. Compared to you two, <laughs> you are Rocky Roads, and I like that. And I am a vanilla bitch. I you don't anal like anal? Nope, I oh. can't do it. I Wait, do when was the last lie. time you did it? I was seventeen. <laughs> oh wow. Okay, okay, okay. But just hear me out because I, no, I actually trust me. Give me the TED talk. I want to try, <clears> but <throat> I am you know. Okay, so here's he the thing, plugs. and <clears throat> so this is actually listeners first time hearing this actually because it happened last night oh okay and this episode is Exclusive. releasing tomorrow so this is great yeah this is, this is like a breaking cam news. yeah breaking news <laughs> cammy update cammy edition cammy flash I'm, yep yep <laughs> camilla uh, rodriguez has finally explored anal sex after seven years of <laughs> nine okay, years you, nine hey, years and don't say my full name so I yes i love this um, so I was the to, government I, came through the and full so, name so it's been it's one, one week, week since you looked at me. Anyway, no. One week since you looked at me. Anyway. Cocked your head to the set and said anal, please. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not that funny. It was not that funny. Yes, My so Nikki you, loved it. You need to go everywhere with me. Because honestly, Nikki <laughs> thinks I'm the funniest fucking person alive. Honest, and honestly, and it's just, you should take us because we have the loudest like cackles. So like, you know, people you are going to You have great comedy that. laughs. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, oh, no. okay. So anyway, so then. <laughs> So what happened was it's been nine years since I've had anal nine years. Okay. So, and I've, and I've said these stories before, but the last, the last two times I had anal was in college and they were just traumatic experiences. Okay. I joked about it in the past. And then I looked back at it and I was like, oh, I probably shouldn't have joked on that. Cause it wasn't really a good situation to joke about. <clears throat> We but all anyway. do that as women. We try to like <clears throat> make sense of trauma and think it's exactly. Funny. But I'm, mm -hmm. you know, hashtag grown, you know, so I decided I'm not going to joke about what happened. But anyways, so and with my new boyfriend, I told him, I was like, hey, you know, because he really likes anal, I guess. And I told him, I was like, look, I have some trauma around anal. Like, we just need to take it really slow. Mm -hmm. He's also and well endowed. He's huge. <laughs> and I was I've like, seen him at a sex party, so I know what his dick <laughs> so was. Like, but yeah. I'm saying, like, con congratulately. A well -endowed, <laughs> first of all, pause. A well-endowed man who knows what to do with it. Because there are a lot of times where it's like size really does not matter. It is all about the hips and the yeah. formations yeah. and the Pilates How bowl. they use it. It How is do you true. Use it? He's phenomenal with his dick. And I know he's probably going to Congratulations. Gonna be, he's probably going to listen to this tomorrow. Hi, baby. Um, so anyways. <clears throat> you have great dick. No. <laughs> Huge <laughs> fan. Read the his, Yelp reviews. <laughs> his dick is so fucking perfect. And I it's love beautiful, it. I love it? it. I love it. And I love the way he uses it. And it's so funny because I remember- one time, Nikki and I were with his with his wife at um because they're they're poly, so we were with his wife at a bar, and she was like, you know, I'm just really proud of his dick. And the other day, I was just like, I get what she means because I'm really proud of it too. So, anyways, so Teamwork. it's I told him, I told him, it's been a long time since I've been, you know, like we have to go really slow. So we kind of just like been teasing at it. First, we started with like dirty talk, like okay. you know, fantasizing about him fucking my asshole, and we we're like just kind of like talking about it during sex 
Um, and then the last time we hooked up, we like put the tip like around the hole mm -hmm. and just like kind of moving it around, get the sensation, you know, just kind of teasing it a little bit. And then this time, like one thing about him is he really fucking turns me on. And oh, that's beautiful. When when a man like super super turns me on, I will actually want anal. Okay, so it like uh, it, it relaxes you a bit. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But oh, I yeah. think about I think about them like I fantasize about them like filling all my holes basically. So Oh, nope, get that. Oh my god. As someone who watched tentacle porn as a young person, I understand the Wow. Oh, okay. It didn't turn me on. I just kind of was like, "Oh, I understand this fantasy of just having I really like that though. Anyways, this so, is gonna clip that goes viral. This Rose is watched tentacle porn when she was thirteen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wait, I, wait I'm on. very intrigued by this tentacle porn, but, <laughs> we'll talk but about we that yeah, we can we can continue. E bombs world. There's a lot of weird things on the internet. Anyway, there really so, are. So cover me up. So I and, and it's true. Whenever whenever someone really really turns me on, I think about them filling all my holes. A he can't come inside my pussy, which is I I have a breeding kink, so it's really big for me. Um, so the compromise is he can come in my asshole. Oh. Um, so basically last night we, we hung out, um, we were just, we probably had sex for like five hours. <laughs> then we went to get, grab dinner for one hour and then we came back and had more sex. Anyways. The so wait, you had anal after done. dinner? Yeah. Bold. Wait a second. Bold. Yeah. What did you eat? <laughs> yeah. What did you eat? Oh, I ate some mac and cheese and pizza. <laughs> And ice cream. Bold. Bold. Not, Bold. not the lubrication of calcium. Ice <laughs> yeah. cream. I can't. You had ice cream and the, oh, wow. Before wow. ice cream and anal. Wow. No, but, okay. That's a lot of Actually, dairy, babe. Let me, let me. <laughs> That's a lot of dairy. You said mac and cheese and ice cream and, and dairy, pizza. Kimmy, pizza. dairy bothers our stomachs. What were you thinking? My, no, I know. That's why, like, I'm bloated and, like, stopped up today. Um, so, anyways. Well, I'm glad you just shoved somewhere. everything in there, like, packed it in. Really yeah. did. He's like, back just it up, push guys. it back in there. Back I was like, boys. well, actually, I took some magnesium and thought it would help. It didn't. Um, so, anyways. So, actually, let me set the mood because this is really funny. So you're not with the cheese. Okay. <laughs> so, set the mood. Let's go. So, he kind of, he he lives a little bit far away. So, we decided to, usually, like, we'll, we'll switch. I'll drive to him or he, dr he drives to me, right? So, I drove to him last time. So, he was going to drive to me this time. Well, Nikki was at home. And we didn't want to be like at home fucking with Nikki there. So we're like, yeah. So he's like, let's get a hotel room. I was like, okay, that's fine. So we get to the hotel room. And I just think it's so funny because like I'm over here thinking like, imagine like what this guy at the front desk is, you know, we're both like just checking into this hotel. We both live in As the someone area. Someone who used to work at a hotel. It's my favorite moment. Really? really? Oh, we'll talk uh, about that. That's my favorite. But, so, and I, it was funny because like at the end of the night when we were leaving, the valet guy was like, oh, wait, you're you're leaving, like leaving, leaving. We're like, yeah. And he's like, OK. And then we got in the car and I was like, I wonder what they were thinking. And he's like, oh, they know exactly what's going on. We do. Anyways, we, pretend, we try to be all serving like, oh, my God, I hope you enjoyed your stay. And you're like, they were fucking. <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> bleach so we get the sheets. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's why all bleach hotel sheets are the white. sheets. Yeah. And that's why sometimes they get really stiff and stuff. Is you just bleach the shit out of those yeah. sheets, man. Just gallons of it. Anyways, so I so we got a hotel room. We went um, and basically like just fucked for a long time. I brought all my toys and my lube. Um, so shout out to personal fave and good clean love because those are the ones I brought with me. Ooh, nice. um, and I brought my vibrators. So what we we had regular sex like the first few times. And then finally we got to like the point where we're like, OK, like, are we going to like try it? At first I was like, you know what? Just put the just try to see if you can like push through mm -hmm. you know so just just try so he got a bunch of lube lube me up down there and then he started with his finger i actually don't like the finger in there like at see, all see that i, I that's you like the finger me. i do i do, do like a little ooh, ooh, ooh. no i prefer the dick ooh, over ooh. the finger wow. i don't know what it is but i just didn't like the finger in there okay fair fact, so then he i prefer the dick over the finger too well, okay, and good night. That's a wrap. On good night. <laughs> <laughs> so that's okay, Rose. Your preferences are valid. Your yes, preferences they are, are valid. They are. Yes, they are. Okay. No, yeah. I mean, and the finger's easier to take. That's for sure. That, but he was like testing out I'm the a hole. Punk ass bitch. That's why I like a finger. <laughs> yeah, he was testing out the hole, and it was going well. And then we, and then he brought his dick in the game, and like just started very slowly going in. And I was like, <sighs> you know, like, and he's like. Let's take a deep breath. And I was like, okay. 
And then, you know, he's like, okay, we're going to go at your pace. So Mm -hmm. we tried a few different positions. There's one that really worked on your side, leg up. Anyways. Okay. So I've heard this. Yeah. It like the really idea nice. of like you're yes you want to be so basically like you I had like one leg yep. down and then here and I was like on my side with a pillow it was actually really nice Ooh. um but he he went in really slowly and it didn't and I don't know if it was just because we used lube and we went slow but like the last time I had had anal nine years ago I remember that burn I remember that burn like in the back of my head like mm-hmm. it's ingrained in there and this time it didn't burn at all and like I said He's got a pretty big package, and I was, like, kind of scared, but, like, we did breathing exercises, we used lube, we went slow, we went at my pace, and then, like, I took that dick like a champ. I know you did, because you would you a G, you a legend, you would icon, you the moment, <laughs> and you waited. <laughs> the Cinderella of anal dick. He just yes! fit perfectly. He did, and we were wow. actually, like, able to, like, he was able to, like, thrust after a while, mm-hmm. and I loved it, because he, like, checked in a bunch, and... Um, we did, yeah, we just, we, we took the right steps. So, and then at the very, at the very end, like the first time I was like, I was like, okay, you know, he came and I was like, don't pull out yet. And he was just, I was like, just go slow. And he was like, it's like, he was like, it's okay. Like, it's fine. Nothing's going to come out. Like you're fine. Like, um, so when he like pulled out and I, I was all worried, but he just like took a towel and like wiped me down there and like everything was good. And then we showered and then we tried it three more times and it was great. So you did it four times in one night yeah, after it, cheese and after cheese after pizza <laughs> after, after ice mac and cream cheese, I, after cannoli after I, ice cream after I, tiramisu I, I don't know what it was but like like I said he just really turns me on I think okay, okay fair. That, we either did it yeah. three or four times I know we did it at least twice before we went to dinner and then. Cause like we would like you know have sex, stop, talk for a little bit, have oh, sex that's again, the best. stop, yeah. Out, yeah, giggle, laugh, shower, take a nap. We I know you like said you're against showers. anal. Would you try a butt plug? Oh, have we tried- did try a butt plug. You that's did? another thing. That's, okay, so you, do you wear it during sex? Yes, you can. Yeah, yeah. And so, so just to kind of just to kind of loosen the area up a little bit and give you that sensation while you're having normal yes. penetrative sex. And mine actually, oh. my butt plug like fell out. I was like, I know I don't have a stretched out booty hole, but like. <laughs> The butt plug fell out during sex, so I was like, sometimes it does because just it get it can get kind of pushed out. Yeah, right. plus like I, from I had, like yeah, yeah. I had the beginner butt plug, so it's tiny, tiny. Have but you tried so, one? Have you tried one? Butt plug? No, yes. no. But I do love ass play. Like if a guy's gonna be down there eating exactly. ass, like lick it up, man. Just okay. You so know. you like eating? I okay, do. you like? And do I also, you eat I, ass? Yes, I do. If oh. a man wants it, I'm I'm down for it. Honestly, Same. something about Same. it. And everyone's like, oh, it's so gross and everything. I'm like, no, half it's the not. time, if you're already down there, you're already partaking in it, especially if you have a guy that likes to get his like, balls sucked. You're like, yeah. I come on, guy. Every, yeah, it's all taint, right there. It's the all right there. The taint is right there. It's it's all connected. It's fine. You'll cl- we'll clean ourselves up. Like, And also, when people overthink it, I'm kind of like, what is happening with your body where you're just like, it's so gross down there. I'm like, you know the dudes that don't clean their ass. And yeah. I'm like, not that one. Yeah. I'm really then, proud of my boyfriend because the way he keeps his ass and taint like trimmed clean, and clean, right. like there's like there's nothing down there. I'm like, this is great. It means that he's like he's genuinely taking care of his body and like it, that's important. And I feel like that's my thing. So I don't mind. Ass I love play. ass. Yeah, play. if the guy takes good care of his whole, I'll definitely. Oh, I love ass play both ways. Pegging, yep, yep, yeah. eating, receiving. See, but I've pegged a man. You have pegged I a have man. Pegged a man. And and I've never felt more power in my entire life. It was I'm very much one of those it. things. You've never done it. No. Wait, what were you gonna say? It's one of those. It's things just. With- I get why men just walk around. Like the second <laughs> I put it on, I. Was I thought the same thing. Bro. I thought the same thing. I found myself being like, damn, I'm (laughs) that dude. Like, I really was that, like, I just felt so. And what was crazy is just that it was, it's funny because I feel like the guy that I did it with, he was, he's bisexual. He's fluid. And so he was like, you know, do you want to try? I was like, this sounds like fun. But it was also, he even warned me. He was like, this is going to be very intimate sex. And I was Mm. like, what? There's nothing intimate about pegging. And No, it is. It's so intimate. And there's just something so like sweet and tender because you have to go slow you're going at someone else's pace and then like finding the rhythm i was like fuck this is like 
not like love making, but like in a weird way, it was just something that was like shareable and he like trusting me to with him and you know, me being like, I've never done this before. And then being like, I want to do this all the time. Like Same. It, it was just so, it's just so beautiful and so intimate. So Agreed. I like thoroughly enjoyed it. But then, you know, <laughs> did you cry? I didn't cry. There have been times I have cried from sex. Cause you know, there's sometimes where it's just like happy cry there. And just like, where you're just like, I saw God. You know what I mean? Those kind of like intense. I, yes. There is meaning to the world. <laughs> like everything is beautiful and epic. Euphoria. Euphoria. And someone who, you know, I don't get, I've never been high, I've never been drunk, but there are times where I'm in it and you're having sex and you're just like. Wow, you raw dog life like that? All the time. I'm <laughs> so proud of yeah, you. Yeah, you didn't know this? No, I knew you were, I knew you <sighs> didn't drink, but. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I raw dog life that way. And I think that's why, like, for me, sex is, was always and has been an outlet, which is then why for a long time I thought that I was, like, leaning towards being a sex addict is because I was using it as a Ooh. form of, like, communication, as a form of, like, in a weird way. Like, uh, I have a, I've struggled with, like, self-harm for, like, a long time in my life. And there was one time where my therapist was like, yeah, you don't cut yourself anymore, but you fucking sleep with as many people as you can. Mm. And I was like, don't ruin the one thing that I love and enjoy, <laughs> which is sex, because I thoroughly really love sex yeah. and enjoy it. And I realized that I was like misusing it. But so it's okay if it's an outlet. It's yes. okay if it's an outlet. Like if you do it in a healthy way and you recognize like that's how you can like expend the energy that you want to. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that because I've done the exact same thing. It got to a point though where I was like not even enjoying the sex. And oh, then that's, that's different. That's different. And that's where it became though yeah. where I was like, oh, this is no different because I was like not even fucking to enjoy it because I like love sex I love the orgasm I love the idea of like this religious spiritual existence of just being like fuck this feels amazing and it's funny because there was this one dude that was like you might be experiencing sex differently because you've never been high because it's this, this idea that it's like I don't know how to compare this euphoria to anything else so it's <gasps> like when I get there it's just like things that it, it just it's a that's different a great feeling. point that's yeah. a great point I but, like that especially when you were talking about like how when he this is a new thing I've realized recently is when he said the like take a deep breath in like that's become my thing now i had a guy right before he put it in was like take a deep breath in and i was like oh this unlocked a new level and where i was like breathing like t a man telling me to breathe during sex i was like i don't uh, know what kink that is it's air bending or something but it was just <laughs> like it's just this whole thing where he'd be like stop take a deep breath in and i'd be like yes it, daddy it, 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 well that's why I, mean, I was like and it had nothing to do with like is your brain going off now? Yes. This idea of oxygen mm. and just like the Oh, but then they took the shit out of you. Oh. Girl, and that's what I was saying when he was like, take a deep breath in and then just went for the jugular. <gasps> and I was like, say my oh. name, say my name. Like, the thought was, of that literally oh. just made me come. What? Oh my God. Literally. This man is a genius. He, he's a brilliant human being. He's a terrible human outside the bedroom. But uh, like, that's no, we all have he has one saving grace. I mean, at my this point. God, isn't that because so I used to have smart. a I used to have a guy that used to choke the shit out of me and I loved it. And the the it's breath play, whatever you want to call it, yeah. was like so intense and so exhilarating and so arousing and just like so there's thrilling, so much you can do so with the euphoric. Breath. Yeah. But never have they been like, take a breath and then. Can you, girl, I lot my toes, fingernails, and heart curled. It curled, was like, you're the, like uh, it just was a <laughs> sensation that I had never experienced before. And it was like, oh, yeah, I never, I can't not Kudos do it. Kudos to him. I know. And now it's become this thing where I'm like, do I just teach every man after this? Yes, like, yeah. yes, you do. Yeah. yeah. Do the Lord's work, Rose. I, but I moral can't. of the story is try. I know. I really do want to try. try. It again. Wait, with this guy in Atlanta, do you think saved. you'd be willing to try some new things? You know what's so... Because it sounds like you like him. I, you know... Ah! <laughs> Ooh, what's going um, on? It's hard. It's so hard to explain because, like, you know, I was I was there for work. <clears throat> and so it was, like, really hard to, like, try to, like not be distracted but the best thing about my job is that like you know i just basically you know i'm a, I, I make shit up for a living like mm -hmm. being being a writer for a tv show it's like it's it's not even work it's play so i thought i would go down there and just be like focused on work and then I, this gentleman kind of arrived in my life and i was just like oh this is fun like i really like how he makes me feel and the what fucked me up is the fact that i fell asleep around him Oh. I have never been able to sleep with a man in my bed. Even like when like past dudes from like the podcast. That means you trust him. That means your inner child feels safe with him. 
I need my mommy and daddy. <laughs> no, that literally, if if you find yourself like feeling more sleepy and like fi- falling asleep easily with a man, it means he, you he makes you feel safe and like you can trust him. So like your inner child's like, I can rest. Oh fuck, I do like this guy. Oh gross. <laughs> I love this for both of you because like you're you know you're having this dude. Kami's having her boyfriend who she's like finally having anal with, and you know I'm having like a third life crisis. Wait, what? Let's not worry about me right now. What is happening? Wait, what were you going to say? Oh, well, I was just going to say, I, I hope you do try anal. If I it, do. I if it to. can be a save, if it, if it can be saved for me, it can be saved for you. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm fucking 17 years. And try it with this guy. It sounds like you and really try, like him. And try it with the breath. When when my boyfriend <gasps> that, was yeah, like, the, take the a breath deep work breath, helps a lot. Okay. When, when he said that, I was just like, it instantly relaxed Exhale me. as they go in. So take a deep breath and, and as they push in, exhale. You know what's so funny? As you said that, I could feel my butt clench no matter what. <laughs> <It's just laughs> the idea of my ass was like, not today. I do want to try. I also do think that's like in a weird way, kind of like what you were talking about with in the sense of like what happened, you know, prior to everything. It's like, I don't know why that place has just been like, that just feels like the last like. That's that okay. Is, it's okay. Like it, it's, it was a healing experience. It can, that's what I want to get to though. For a lot know? of people, it's that place where they tend to avoid. So that's okay. Yeah, yeah, I really rewrote the narrative there. No. See, and I love, and that's what I want to go to. And that's when I go. And I remember the boyfriend that I had at the time when we first tried, he was like truly understanding, but like he was so well endowed, but didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. Mm. And I think with that, I was like, oh, okay. So you don't trust him to like go down there with he's with that kind of a rod. Yeah. But then with, you know, this Southern gentleman, I don't, I don't know. He's, he's very, he's very tender and he's very sweet and his. You I know. love the way you smile when you talk about him. So that makes when me do you, happy when for do you. When do you go back to Atlanta? Yeah, when do you see him I don't again? I go back to Atlanta until like j- end of June, July. So you won't see him for a while? Yeah, but he made a comment about like, I want to come visit you in LA. And oh my God, like, yes. It's so stupid. I'm so it's happy. So, for it's so dumb. But he's very, it's, uh, it, oh God, I don't know. If he listens to this, I'm, I'm sorry, babe. Um, <gasps> but I, babe? But you know me. Here's my other thing, though. Wait, 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 a little, a little said. I love love, right? Mm, like I yes. think everyone knows, like I'm such a flirt. Like the way I, it was funny because everyone was trying to figure out who this person was. And it was just like, I treat all dudes like the same, the same in yeah. front of the bedroom. And then behind I'm like this different girl. And with him, it was like falling asleep with him. So my inner child was just like, we like him. And I just like, we kept on joking about how we wanted the high school experience, which by the way, bring back the crush. Yeah. The oh yeah. Crush, yes. I love a good crush. Mm-hmm. And so it was just nice to be like, I have a crush and like looking forward to seeing him all the time, which was just like super sweet. But I mean, he did, and I guess it's because he's from the South and it's like completely different down there. He did ask my body type and I just remember being like, or my body count. And I just remember being like, my guy, I don't want to play this game. Like it's cause my number is either going to, upset you or embarrassed you or Or something something. or you're gonna make me remember a number that I have lost count of you know what I mean I've lost count too I don't know that's my other thing is that I'm like okay cool like and obviously I was right I've had more experience than him but it didn't I kept on telling him it's like the was he under 50 yeah girl yes under under 20 under under 20 under 10 we're about there ish (gasps) Yeah, about. Wow. And are you over 50? Yeah. Triple been. digits. Y- yep. Love that. So <laughs> we there. And I was like trying to explain to him, there's that great episode of Will and Grace <laughs> where when Grace is dating Woody Harrelson's character and they do the body count thing, how many people have you slept with? And he was like, I've Woody Harrelson's character was like, I've slept with nine. And she's like, I've slept with 65. And then he was like, well, how many ch- sex have you had? And Grace was like, oh, I've only had like maybe sex like 200, 500 times. And then Woody Harrelson's character was like, well, I've had sex like a thousand plus times. Mm. So it's like just because your number is more with people doesn't mean the experiences of sex have been the same. It also doesn't mean that just because he's been with X amount of partners and I've been with more partners means that I've had just as great sex. Yeah, exactly. I feel like most of the time my sex was probably not as good because it was lacking the intimacy that I've been trying to avoid right? exactly and that's why it's the hunt of it becomes so fun because when you get that intimacy of just being like that religious thing where you're like I've sh- shared energy with this person and it felt incredible mm-hmm. um which is you know ex- what I'm experiencing with him it's just been it's it's been he's it's fun it's really fun and there's just something about him that I just can't like 
He's I love it for you. Look at you. You're so fucking cute. Oh it's, my god. Yeah, it's but I, wild. I do agree with you about the the whole like intimacy and like chasing that energy exchange. Um, because that's I feel like I've been on that journey ever since probably like February. I broke up with my ex. Um, I got together with my boyfriend pretty soon after that, but I had already had sex with my current boyfriend prior mm -hmm. um, at a sex party. Uh, but one thing I told myself was whenever I ended my relationship with my ex, it was like, I really want to prioritize, like, because the last time I had been single, I was like, I'm going on a hoe phase, like sex with everyone. Woo! <laughs> but, you know, that doesn't always feel it's not good. as cute as it used to be. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I'm, I'm not trying to, like, triple my number, you know, and body count just for the fun of it. Just for the plot. So not I told cute. myself, I was like, I, exactly. I'm really going to prioritize just like building good connections and having sex with the people who do make me feel safe and who do give me the things that I want. Otherwise, like I'm not going to put the kitty through that. Yeah. I'm not going to put the kitty through that because then my energy is going to be fucked up. My inner child, which my last therapy appointment, that's all the work that I did was with my inner child. And mm. she's like you know, a little tiny thing looking for direction and someone to hold and, you know, hashtag anxious attachment. And my therapist is, you know, sitting there like, well, you know, it's time to grow up. You don't need a mommy. You don't need a daddy anymore. Like, let's, you know, let's reparent and be your own parent. And I'm just like, you're like, yeah, but like, <clears throat> <laughs> exactly. Do you have like, another <laughs> option? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Therapist? So and then after all that, I was just like, it just kind of solidified for me even more. Like, I definitely want to be choosy about the the people I give my sexual energy to yeah. at this time. That's yeah. the journey I'm also on. OK, so yeah. OK, yeah. Let's, let's go. So now this takes us to you. The third the third go around. This is breaking news for <gasps> it's also breaking news for me. You every, guys, am I on the legit podcast? OK, <laughs> let's yeah. get cozy. Um, OK, so over the weekend we went to Hawaii and one of my. Which, by the way, Nikki has lost privileges of bringing partners on trips. I've lost privileges. Yeah. So I brought one of my partners, one of my friends with benefits so, um, and I've talked about him before on the pod, Calvin. I brought him um, to Hawaii. I, we've been sleeping together like almost two years. You know, we've known each other a long time. Great friends, whatever. Um, and I was like, and we had mentioned it a long time ago. So anyways, whenever we were booking the trip, I was like, hey, you still want to come? He was like, absolutely. So he came with. Anyways, um, while we were on the trip, he was telling a story at breakfast one morning. Oh, and what? why do I know where I, why do I feel like I know this? Why? I OK, sorry. I had a that's so Raven moment, but continue. OK, he was telling a story and like in the middle of telling this story, like something in me just finally like clicked. The, yep. It's the ick click. Yeah. You know how when you click. get the ick. Yeah. And you're like, let me ignore it. And then something snaps in your body and you're like, not this. You Annabelle kind of. Where you're yeah, like, you're like, nope. It yep. like suddenly I was like, I had this like light bulb go off in my head. And then I was like, what the fuck am I doing here? Yeah. And I was like stewing with it all day, which I felt really bad about. And I kind of let it go for a little bit because I'm like, you know what? We're in Hawaii. It's beautiful. Like, let's just enjoy okay, it. And it was. Friends. We're with friends, whatever. But then like that night, you know, I went on a little plant medicine journey. Oh, fun. And um, yeah. And at one point I'm like, I just need to tell him. I just need to tell him how I'm feeling and like I, I got to let him know and like this friendship is over. And so that night I told him and then the and like the next day in the morning we talked about it. Um, And honestly, his response was kind of rude and he like completely was like, OK, cool. Yeah, I understand. Bye. I guess, you know, I'll, you know, when we'll enjoy these last two days. So that kind of pissed me off. But then I had this whole revelation where I was just like because I had I had two other partners besides him, mm -hmm. um, you know, that I was seeing one of them for about a little over a year and the other one for almost a year. And I was like, I just kind of had this moment where I was like, no one makes me feel like enough. Ooh. No one, like I wasn't good enough for Calvin. I never gave one of them enough like attention and love that made him feel secure. And then I never gave the other one enough like affirmation and sex to make him feel secure in his own body. And I was like, everyone's draining me everyone's making me feel like I'm not enough and then I was like I gotta end it with all of them yeah. so yesterday I blocked Calvin broke up with the other one filed my taxes and paid 6k to the IRS and then broke up with the other one 
Not Uncle Sam being like your breather time. You were like, <laughs> like hey, I got to break up with Uncle Sam. Okay, just kidding. I got to pay him to go away. And this one, we can't share a cat anymore. You exactly. I mean? wow. So Okay, so we're, we're... So it was a big day yesterday. Wow. Big day. How are you feeling right now? liberated really it feels good but it, i'm sad i don't like i'm really sad because you i can have I, sadness and liberation that doesn't mean it's negative though no you're right you're right happy cry happy you know cry I mean? like and well and the thing is is that like i loved all of them like individually in in kind of like their own way i cherished all of them i thought they were great men i really loved my time with them but when we were talking earlier about how like your body knows mm -hmm. my sex drive has been gone for months and I was like, Oof, no yeah. one's like, and I think it's because of all the problems that I've been having with this dude, with these dudes, you know, because before I used to love having sex with all of them, like a ton. Look forward and now, to it. Exactly. And now like my body's just like, meh, like, and, and so for a variety of reasons and now, yeah, like I'm so, you know, I actually, I didn't know whether to cry first about like my taxes or my relationships, you know, cause like. It was I, less than you owed last year. Yeah, last year I owed 15 grand and this Jesus year I owed six. Christ. Yeah, I know. I got to get a better, I got to do better with my withholdings, but. My guy. <laughs> okay. That's fair. Then you know what? Fuck it. Adulting yeah. is stupid. Yeah. You either pay <laughs> enough and you get some back or you don't pay, like, or you pay. Or you pay the ultimate price. Yeah, exactly. So like either way, like you're paying the same amount. doesn't yeah. matter if you pay ahead or after. But so. financially you were emotionally spent as well as like. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I was yeah. financially and emotionally drained and I was just like, well, not drained, <laughs> but financially. But, almost, but you, but I think that's also interesting. The dis distinction is that you were like almost drained and like how many times have we gone past the point of like being completely drained like at least you got to a point where you're like i got a little water left in the well and i'm gonna give it to myself i'm not gonna like give it to anyone oh my god i don't want to make you cry no that was but great rose keep going that was phenomenal but this is what i wanted is. to tell you i'm like i know i was gonna have something really profound to say about it and i'm gonna love it and that i yeah i had enough water left in the well for me to be like you know what it's time to end these yeah, things because if we're on. always we all if you think about it your life is just basically it's a it's like a cup and so it's like how much do you give to someone's water and how much they give to you and it's just this idea of just like successful like economy basically of like yeah. give and take oh, yeah. and like take and give and want well and that's what i finally realized i'm like no one's filling my cup it, and yeah. here you are being like, and I, my cuffeth should runneth over because I have three options. And then you're kind of like, oh, the reason why it's mine's not running over is because I'm giving them so fucking yeah, much. Yeah, exactly. So then here you are looking at your water line being like, okay, I have enough to just basically get me through the last 24 hours of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And once I get there, then I'll have enough to like basically, yeah. cause it, once it happens, you, it, it feels impossible to get back to the water line that you feel most comfortable with, but it doesn't mean it's not going to come back exactly it's a lot harder though when you're completely dry exactly then you what happens is you kind of that that turns into resentment or bitterness and then yeah. you're just kind of like fuck everyone and everything yeah when you're when you're dealing with your own stuff personally and you're like man this makes me really sad and this makes me really uncomfortable you can kind of like build from that but that's when i know i've gone too far is when i start hating other people's happiness and yeah I'm like, Ooh, that means i ain't got no water in my well no I'm water completely dry I'm exactly just being a cunt to everyone Instead of being like, you got to a point, though, that was like healthy for you to be like, you know what? I'm better than these bitches. Yeah. And I don't need to satisfy any of these hoes because Lord knows they're not satisfying me. Yeah. And the amount of times we sacrifice ourselves that way for other people. It's just fucking ridiculous. I mean, even this shit, this podcast, mm -hmm. like, I mean, what y'all do and like what Steph does. I mean, I'm just like, you know, the cute girl that gets to come on, kick it and then leave. But like this is giving a lot to a lot of people. You know what I mean? Just in the sense that there's so many people that leave. Like, think about how many young people watch. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you know, looking at your guys' impact and, like, even especially looking at all the footage from the show you guys did in the Bay Area, like, how many young people w listen to these podcasts and feel less alone or understand, like, it's okay to talk about sex and sex isn't a bad, negative thing. It's, like, a beautiful thing that you should constantly be redefining and, like, exploring that, like, yeah, no, it makes sense that you finally woke up and you realized you're like, man, people rely on me. People trust your guys' opinion and like look to you. Oh my God, I'm sorry. No, I love this. Rose, I love you. I love you. I love you. I feel like that's another thing that you probably don't consider as a way of giving water and like everything. Yeah. It's just it's a people look forward to this podcast and listen to it for advice, for the fun, for the everything, but you are giving up a bit of yourselves when you do so mm -hmm. um oh but yeah. yeah so it's just nice that you guys can like you know 
in your personal lives know that you're coming to these great moments of being like, I had anal and like coming to this moment of, I don't want anything. It's, yeah. these are beautiful revelations that as people listen to this are kind of like, okay, what's the anal or the like revelation in my life that I need to figure out, you know? So. Well, and I mean, I think anyone should always just keep in mind that like, um, you know, like do what you need to do for you absolutely. because like I, I know at least for two of them, you know, Calvin didn't care, but like the other two, like I, br- I think they were really heartbroken that it ended, but both of them knew like, as soon as I was like, this is why I'm ending it. They're like, yeah, like, um, mm-hmm. and I know one of them, he sent me this big long text after, and he was like, you know, you said that I made you feel like I wasn't enough. And he was like, these are all the ways in which you are enough, but it's like, which was really touching, but he was like, I'm sorry that I do. I was just too late to show you. You know, because he had his, he knew it. He did. He started therapy and like, he's doing great. But like, it just, it like, it was still at a point where, and we had an argument like right before Hawaii that kind of like sparked it for me where I was just like, it's still not giving me, you know, and enough to like fill my cup. But, um, but I definitely think when it, when I started to feel like myself, like I, I I felt like I wasn't enough for them. You know, Mm -hmm. they, I wasn't enough for whatever reason to each of them. But then when I started looking at myself and I was like, maybe I'm just not enough in general. That's when I was like, hold on. See, that's, that's the most, yeah. You past that point. Yeah, that's when I was like, oh, da, 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 da. Everyone like, that's, calm down. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, just because they've got their own shit and it's like projecting onto me and whatever, like does not mean that like that my self-worth or my value is like, you know, compromised. So that's when I was like, I need to walk away. So, so yeah. And, and like, don't, don't be afraid to walk away when you need to, you need to. It, and, and the craziest part is I feel like, you know, when you're in that moment where you're kind of like, should I, should I not like that emotional is that emotional state is a lot more draining than if you actually make the jump. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When people are like, should I break up with the person or not break <clears throat> up with them? It's like the idea of thinking about the breakup really is like a longer amount of like healing than actually just doing it and being like, okay, fuck it. I'm breaking up. Yep. You're like, wow, wow. You're I right. Pump- that that part the is agony so much dream. Yeah, the agony. It is because I, I felt that a lot with my ex. And we And that was like a year's worth of that. And for that you. was I drained myself trying to make it work because like I just knew in the back of my mind, I was like, this isn't working, this isn't working, this is not gonna work, this is not you could give this however many tries you want, but it's it's always gonna be that same end result. You're stuck in a pattern and you need to get out of it. But like I loved him. Yeah. And I loved you know, being, I, I think I loved the friendship more than I loved the romance, Oof. but like I loved being in his vicinity because even though the romance wasn't good, like the friendship part of it was. So every single time, like I had to think like, okay, like I think it's time, like I need to break up with it. I need to end it. It like that, it really drained me. It got me so bad. And I was just like, I, I didn't know where to even go to, you know, pick myself back up again but then when I finally did it I was like it was just a relief it was like okay well you know I did it and now it's like and I'm I'm still good I'm still here yeah exactly exactly I'm still here like you know life goes on and I feel like a lot of times like you know we forget that especially because if someone becomes a part of our daily routine like it really sucks like taking that out of it Mm mm-hmm um that's the adjustment yeah that's the adjustment but sitting in it and not being mindful enough to realize that you're in the moment and you're like wow i've been debating whether or not to break up with this person for six months yeah you do it and you're fine in six hours you're like okay i needed to do that yeah your body readjusts your your schedule readjusts like it's fine you you really like you keep going and i i know i saw time heals everything Mm -hmm. i saw him one more time after he and i broke up and then after that like i stopped reach i just i didn't text him after and i everything after that like i almost just it it felt i went back to normal my own normal so quickly Mm -hmm. that it almost feels like i don't even like that feels like lifetimes ago now yeah and it was literally i want to see what it feels like for me as i let it like sit in more because you know like with one of them like two years but but then i remember i was telling my friend about it and i was like i'm gonna miss him and she goes i think you've been missing him she's like he's been treating you like crap for months i was like you've been missing him good yeah yeah i was like she said that and i was like (laughs) and i was like when you're mourning when you're mourning a relationship while before it ends yeah before it ends that is the worst it's the worst worst. i did that but it makes the recovery easier Fair. No, facts. I did that with my ex death. for a year. Yeah. I started, and actually, you know what? I started mourning that relationship three months in. 
I was See, like, I knew I, I, I was like, I'm not going to get, what you I know, your this. body knows. I just knew, but I kept it going for two years. See, this is the body choice episode. Like your body knows. And listen, made the to the body. You. Listen, listen to the body. Listen to the body. body. That's, I mean, yeah, that's it. The whole idea of like, if I ever lose this person, you're like, you've already lost. If you, if that's how you're thinking, you've kind of already lost that person. If you oh, yeah. think about like, if like the beginning of the end, Ugh, God, oh, yeah. the grossest feeling. <laughs> I actually, I kind of had like that anxiety moment for a moment with my current, or uh, last weekend about like my current boyfriend. And I think it was just like my body's so used to doing that with previous partners. Cause it did oh, that it's with, a nerd, it's a knee jerk reaction. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. like a knee jerk. And I stopped myself for a moment and I was like, and I, I feel safe in this relationship and I feel good about exploring it and everything about it makes me feel really good. So I'm like, I don't need to like do this. I think my body, my brain's just like, okay, well we did this last time. So let's do it again. And I was like, hold the fuck on. Like, no, See, I love that. And it also just feels like two types of new beginnings that you like, we're all on. You yeah. I mean? Yeah. It, it might feel like an ending and this is like a new beginning, but they're both beginnings in different circumstances which and is yours really is funny. a new beginning too I, this is cute <laughs> i love the way the your face the second you start talking about him i'm so excited to hear more about him when it progresses like come back in june or july or whatever and like let's talk more about it because i want to see what happens yeah with the we're gonna call him the southern gentleman <laughs> the southern gentleman. the southern wait do you know his sign uh yes i do because he uh oh my god if my yes i know his sign what is he uh, you might need to believe it up but he's an and you're a Scorpio, a m- ruled couple. I, oh, and, hot, hot. So now you can understand why I was like, oh, you know, like this <laughs> man, my <laughs> orgasm, like it was so good. My sciatica was cured for like three seconds. Love that. Because like my spine straightened in my back and I was like, I feel so good. And then, you know, <laughs> my sciatica came back, but it like almost disappeared. Love that. Oh, oh my God. We'll leave it yeah. out. Your it's face. Okay. This is the cutest thing. Rose, I, really like I haven't it. seen Rose in love. I, it's been a long time, so it's been great. But I know what that means because I work on TV. Okay, so I promise you'll come back in like July or August, oh, maybe to talk about it. Oh, well, you'll be at our New York live show. Oh, we'll go to the New York live show. We can talk about it there. No, yes, for sure. I would love to. I want to hear more about this. I love this. This was such guys. a good episode. Thank you. Really Rose, it always is with you. It always is. I laugh. I like, I, I cry. Laugh, I cry. Yeah, like every, you bring all my emotions. We talk about out. dicks and it, asses. It's great. Yeah. It is. I know. I That's what I was thinking about yesterday. I'm like, for once in my life, I have zero dicks enjoy it girl oh it's so much fun you have really? the peep show pink dildo it's fine you're yeah. right I, I have my pink dick but i was like what am i gonna do without dick but i think i'll survive a mm-hmm. good cleanse just get it out <laughs> you know what i mean just green your green juice phase right now just like cleanse you have your you things. have girlfriends yeah oh, there you go mm-hmm. Test something out new try it out just start get your strap on out and just go peg someone Oh, I love pegging. I, I love. my boyfriend and my other partner both want to be pegged. So this is a journey I'm about to go it's on. The funnest thing in the world. And when now, you said the power thing, it really is. It really power. is. All right. Rose, thank you so thank much. Thank you. For on. We, love you. We, love we you love so you. We love you. You are really amazing, do. wonderful. You are the moment. You are that bitch. You uh, but are. also she is a writer and producer. Bitch Watch now. her show. Uh, you want to plug it? Or- BMF season three is filming now. When will it air? Sometime soon. Okay. Check it out. And uh, working on a new project. I don't know where that's going to go. But yeah, you <gasps> can always find me on Instagram at Rose at underscore Etta Stone. Love that. Thanks. We love you. And we you can you. find us at DoubleTeamPodcast.com. All relevant links are there. Instagram at DoubleTeamPodcast at Cami and Nikki. Same with TikTok. We love y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Yes, wear condoms. Wear condoms. Wear condoms and have fun. Yes. Peg if you can. Peg if you can. Peg if you can. Love that. (laughs) (laughs) And my ex will send that to me. (laughs) 